The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. Thank you, friend, for joining us on Grace in Focus today, this broadcast podcast of the Grace Evangelical Society. We are very glad you are with us, as today we take a question from our listening audience about Revelation twenty-two nineteen, where it says God shall take away his part out of the book of life. If eternal security is true, how could this also be true? Well, there's a great answer just ahead, and I hope you'll stay tuned as Bob Wilkin and Ken Yates will have a discussion about it coming up. In the meantime, I want to tell you about our website, faithalone.org. It is a great website for information and resources about the free grace position. I hope you'll check it out. And one thing right now that we're really emphasizing is the Grace Evangelical Society's National Conference 2023 coming up May 22nd through the 25th. It's going to be held on a beautiful Christian campground, Camp Copus in Denton, Texas. We're going to have an abundance of great free grace speakers for you. Lots of food, lots of fellowship, lots of recreation, and great hotels to stay in right there on the campgrounds. We hope you'll consider it and get registered at faithalone.org. Now for today's discussion, here are Ken and Bob. Bob, you have a question that through the years in different ways I've heard asked. So why don't you read it for us? Yeah, JC gives a pretty long question, but his big concern comes from Revelation twenty two nineteen, And he says, the thundering words, quote, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, unquote. Those words really cause him to be concerned about his eternal destiny and whether he has committed a sin, which is something which won't ever be pardoned. The book of life then is when I believe in Jesus for eternal life, my name is written in the book of life, but here God will take out from the book of life. Okay. Now let's say a little bit more about that. In Revelation 20 and verse 15, The Lord tells us anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So eternal condemnation is based on who's not in the book. I think your explanation is correct that when a person believes in Christ, they're put into the book of life. However, other people have the view, which I don't think makes sense, but I have heard people who have the view that everybody, once they're conceived, They're put in the book of life. And then if they pass the age of accountability and die in unbelief, then they're taken out of the book of life. And so everybody left in the book of life is somebody who has life. I don't think that makes sense. There are no verses that say that anybody's going to be removed from the book of life. Now, Revelation 3, 5 is misunderstood that way. And we have articles and talks on Revelation 3, 5. Also, Revelation twenty two nineteen is misunderstood that way. Which is the way this question is being asked, right? That you, right. your name can be taken out. The way JC's asking is he thinks he's going to be taken out of the book of life. So let's talk about Revelation twenty two nineteen. Here's what it says, starting in verse 18. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And then verse 19 And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Okay, so what a lot of people understand there is if you add to the book of Revelation, and a lot of people expand this to all of Scripture, then God's going to curse you. And if you take away, then God's going to take away your part from the book of life and also from the The Holy City. Right. I think we would say from your part in the Holy City. Yeah. Right. And from the various blessings that are mentioned in the book of Revelation for the overcomers, I would say. Yeah, because the, the book starts, blessed is the one who reads and heeds the words of this book. So there's blessings. He will take those blessings away. Right. However... The big problem here is Revelation twenty two nineteen does not say God shall take away his part from the book of life. It actually says God will take away his part from the tree of life. And so this is just a terrible translation. What this comes from 
in the King James Version of the Bible, Erasmus only had a handful of Greek manuscripts. And he relied a lot on Latin. Some of those manuscripts didn't even cover a verse, so he would go to the Latin right. Vulgate. Yes. And he would translate the Latin Vulgate into English. So the texts he had were pretty good on everything but the book of Revelation. If you have a New King James Version, which Art Farstad was a good friend of mine on the board of GES, etc., and Art told me he wasn't allowed to change the text. He was only allowed to change the translation. So if the words had changed meaning, he would do that. But when it came to Book of Life, Tree of Life, Even though the vast majority of manuscripts say tree of life, he couldn't change it because he was constrained by following the King James Version and the text that they use. If you read any English translation other than the King James, New King James, they're all going to read tree of life. That's true of the Numeric Standard, NIV, Net Bible, Holman Christian Standard Bible, on and on and on. It's the tree of life. And in the book of Revelation, the tree of life is a reward for faithful service. Well, what a difference that makes in this verse, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Your part will be taken away from the tree of life. Right. And that goes back, look at two, I believe it's two seven. I always get that. Two, two seven. seven. Yeah. yeah. So want to read that? Yeah. Revelation two seven. This is to the church at Ephesus. Jesus ends his message to them saying, he who has an ear, and here he's talking to the believers, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So this is a reward for the believer that they're going to be able to have that. And of course, and it's for the overcoming believer. It's for the victorious believer in each of those seven letters. Jesus is speaking to these seven different churches and he tells them This is what I want you to do. And in five of them, he tells them they need to repent. They need to turn from their sins, talking to believers. And if you overcome, if you do the things that he tells you to do, here's your reward. And so the tree of life, according to the beginning verses in chapter 22 of Revelation, it doesn't just have one fruit. It has 12 different fruits. Each month, right. So January, there's one fruit. February, another fruit. March, another fruit. It's going to be like fruit of the month club, right? (laughs) But it's not going to just be tasty pomegranates or tasty figs or tasty peaches or plums or whatever. The eating of it is going to enhance your ability to glorify Christ. In some way, which obviously we don't know all the details here, but this idea of eating it is it's going to be a reward Maybe an intimacy with Christ, a more knowledge, or more of an abundant experience of life in the kingdom. It's going to lead to enhanced life. And by the way, in 2219, he not only says, take away his part from the tree of life, but also from the holy city. I think that ties in with a few verses earlier. Verse 14, blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life. I noticed tree of life there. And... Enter through the gates into the city. Notice you have those two things mentioned in both 14 and 19. That's a strong, strong argument to me that it should be tree of life in verse 19. Okay, now what is it in the Old Testament? The gates of a city were the place of honor. That's where judgment took place. That's where the elders would gather. It's where business was taken place. Business took place. So it appears that what Revelation 22, 14 is saying is that only the overcomers get to go through the 12 gates. If you're a non-overcomer, you have to take the subway (laughs) or you have to take the tram. But to go through the gates is restricted to the overcomers because that's a reward. What's taken away in Revelation 22, 19 is not someone's everlasting life. It is taking away their ability to eat of the tree of life and taking away their ability to enter the new Jerusalem through its gates. If I could give a military illustration of that. Okay, there you go. At various times when I was in the military, there were certain doors that I could not use, that you had to be a certain rank. Oh, really? That Yes. Like I did my undergraduate at the Air Force Academy. And there were certain, as a dually, as a freshman, dually for slave, we were not allowed to use certain places, go in through certain doors. Those were only for 
upperclassmen. And then when I was stationed in uh, Cuba, I was with the Navy, and the Navy were very particular about this, the dining hall, what doors you could go in as an officer versus enlisted of where you could eat. And that's basically what's going on here. These gates of the city will be for certain people, those who are reigning with Christ. Right. And the same thing with the tree of life, as we saw back in Revelation chapter 2. It's a reward. And they have this privilege. And if you don't see it that way, it leads to tremendous confusion. I have a book called The Road to Reward, which goes into more detail on this. You can check it out at faithalone.org. Zane Hodges has a book, Grace in Eclipse, that's all about eternal rewards. And he goes into these questions. Also, you can go to faithalone.org. And we have a lot of articles about the tree of life and the book of life. And what we should, as believers, we should look at this. And even if we don't understand all the details, and obviously we don't, this is talking about the world to come, talking about the eternal state, and we have a, a number of questions, it should cause us to say, I hope the Lord, when he evaluates my life, will say that I honored him in such a way that I can eat from the tree of life and enter in through these gates in order to serve him and to serve others more effectively in the coming kingdom. And so the issue is we need to stay watchful in light of his soon return so that we'll hear the blessed words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And and in this question, yes. we'll be able to eat from the tree of life. That goes along with the Absolutely. That's approved part of- believers, the overcoming believers. Well, this is great. Thank you so much, JC, for this great question. And let's all keep grace in focus. Bob Wilkins' great book, The Ten Most Misunderstood Words in the Bible, is available half price right now in the GES bookstore, faithalone.org. Go there and use the code word MISUNDERSTOOD for 50% off through March the 31st, 2023. Our goal at the Grace Evangelical Society is to teach Scripture clearly and without confusion. One of the best tools for that clarity, we believe, is our website. It's faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. On our site, we have all kinds of materials that are designed to help you mature and grow in your faith and your understanding of Scripture. Please come visit us at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. You'll be glad you did. God loves a cheerful giver, and that's why we think our financial partners are some of the happiest people in the world. If you would like to learn how to become a financial partner with Grace and Focus, we would very much appreciate it. Learn more at faithalone.org. It's really exciting to hear from our listeners. So if you've got a question, comment, or feedback, I hope you'll reach out to us. Best way to do that is through email. Here is our email address. It's radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. Next time on Grace in Focus, we'll open up a short three-program series on the phrase adoption as sons. It's found in the Bible, and we're going to have some great discussions on it. I hope you'll join us next time on Grace in Focus. This is the Grace Evangelical Society. Until next time, let's keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.